Let's talk about optic crystal. Now, the first thing is there's a few different precautions we have to take when dealing with optic crystal. Now, I'm going to go over some of those in a little bit. But the first thing you want to do is when you unbox any optic crystal piece, you want to check for scratches. Most glass companies will refund you or send you a new piece when you do open it within a certain period of time and send it back. Another thing is we always want to make sure we clean our optic crystal before we place any kind of mask on it. So what we like to use is a glass cleaner and a non-lint producing towel. So a lint-free towel. It could be a microfiber, it could be a blotting towel that we sell here at Raysist. Really anything that's a high quality towel will work. But microfibers seem to work the best. Really what we want to make sure of is no scratching of the optic crystal. Any kind of regular paper towel, any kind of abrasive carpet, any kind of sand residual can scratch this piece easily. And what will happen is that scratch will be very visible because of the high polish that this has. So again, we want to take the most precaution with this particular substrate over any other substrates that we're going to be dealing with. So we'll just get a little bit of glass cleaner, make sure it's nice and clean. Okay, and we're ready to apply. Now, what I'm using here today is an SR3000 self-stick 5 mil. You can use 3, 4, or 5 mil on optic crystal. The more depth you get on a crystal piece, the more pronounced it's gonna be. You're really gonna have a, a good um, visibility of that etch when you get the depth a little bit deeper than you normally would on a glass piece. So, I like to personally give a little bit of depth really get to see that etch, especially when viewing through the crystal, and it will really make your customers, um, it'll give them that wow factor. It'll give them that, uh, when you hand it to them, it will let them know that this is a really well done etched piece. First things first, as with any photo mask, I'm gonna remove the cover paper, and I'm gonna take a small corner and pinch it slightly to push back the mask onto itself. Now, if I take that crystal piece, lay my mask on it. Now notice here, it's a little bit off center. With SR3000 film, I can actually peel up that mask without ruining it or damaging my crystal, and I can reapply it. So it is re repositionable. You're never committed to where that mask is on it once you put it down the first time. So, I've got my mask where I'd like it. I'm gonna take a small squeegee tool or a burnisher and apply a downward pressure onto the mask. Now, another key thing to keep in mind is that SR3000 is a pressure sensitive mask. The more pressure I put down on this mask, the better the bond is gonna be between the mask and the substrate, in this case, the crystal, and the less likely I could have a quote unquote blow up inside my sandblaster where the masking comes up and edges an area that I don't want masked. If you keep a lot of nice pressure, a lot of down pressure onto that mask while you're masking it, then you will not have that, uh, that happen to you. Now I can take the carrier off, tape around my edges, and this will be ready to sandblast. Now, in this case, I'm actually gonna be using a heavy duty vinyl blasting tape. This tape has a little bit more resistance to the sand and abrasive in the, in the sand blaster. And the reason that's important is masking tape is really not a very good resistance to the sand blast. So, if there were any kind of uh, areas where it wears out during the sand blasting process, especially with the depth that we wanna get, it could create small dimples or scratches underneath that tape. And that's the last thing we wanna do is have a little bit of sandblast get through our masking tape and ruin exactly what we're doing. Okay, four pieces of tape, and I'm about ready to blast. Now, one last tool I do wanna to show you is the wire wheel roller. What this does is it perforates the membrane on the film in the areas that you're going to be blasting. A lot of people ask, well, is it going to go through the blue and then leave dimples inside of my sandblast? No, it won't go through the blue film. It's actually just going to perforate that clear membrane. 
One last thing I do want to share with you is remember when you set it in the sandblaster, if you're going to be setting it on the grate itself of your sandblaster, make sure you tape the entire bottom. We don't want any of that abrasive on the, the grate itself to uh, scratch or damage this crystal piece.